morning. It's Carol Martin, and as you can tell, I'm back in my studio and I'm giving in to the call of my watercolors. I have lots that I want to share with you today before I actually begin to do a little bit of painting. The first thing that I wanted to share is this new palette in which I am primarily trying out Daniel Smith watercolors because I think I might be starting to fall in love with them because of the nature of their pigmentation. This section of the, of the Dan, primarily Daniel Smith watercolor palette has colors that have just come to me in the mail from Dick Blick. I have New Gamboge, my much loved undersea green, my new green gold, I cannot get enough of green gold under any circumstances in any kind of pigment, some Windsor Newton olive green because I'm going to be using this palette primarily for working on watercolor faces and a mix of olive green and opera makes the most beautiful skin tones. I also have Pyrrole Scarlet as one of my three basic colors, the New Gamboge, the Pyrrole Scarlet, and the French Ultramarine, the three basic colors in which, as you know, we can mix anything that we don't already have in the tube. I have, of course, my Holbein Opera because of, primarily because of its wonderful uh, mixing with the olive green to make complexion color. I have some rose of ultramarine. Isn't that just, isn't that just a delish color? Some quinacrinone gold, which I just cannot conceive of using, not using that anywhere. Moon glow as a wonderful shadow shade. My Mayan dark hue. It's a beautiful shade of a deep indigo. And of course, I told you about my French ultramarine. Now this little puppy is shares from my art teacher. Because in August, I decided to go back to my art teacher, my watercolor teacher here in Jacksonville, Florida. Jenny Saltis is just a gem. Her personality, the way she teaches, and just the feel of working with her and learning with her is just wonderful. And these are some colors that she shared with us and told us to take little bits and see how we like them. Daniel Smith Cascade is a lovely, lovely shade of granulating greenish blue. We have, I have a permanent violet, now quinacrinone pink, quinacrinone violet, and quinacrinone fuchsia. And here, a Grumbacher Perline Maroon she shared with us on another lesson. And I just love this color. I don't know why, but I do. And so I have some right here in this palette because it's a loved color. So setting aside these for the time being, I wanted to share, this is the palette that I take every week to uh, Jenny's class. This palette I've had with her since I went to her first uh, a few years ago. Many of these colors are just standbys and much love shades. Here, of course, my wonderful Quinn Gold. Over here, the love of my life, a Daniel Smith Undersea Green that I was introduced to ages ago, and you can see that it's been quite used. And over here is the Daniel Smith Mayan, which I have in this also, and my Roy G. Biv selection of colors. Um, violet and green and blue and orange, 
make the most wonderful shades of gray. But being in, in heart um, a bad girl, I also have this little secret palette that I don't necessarily push into Jenny's face because she doesn't really approve of using premixed browns or grays. But I do have in this palette some sepia, some Van Dyke brown, Davy gray. Now this is not wonderful. I mean, I have to understand why she doesn't like it, but sometimes it just does the trick. I have some Payne's gray, some Prussian blue, and a Salo red. I don't use this very often, but sometimes you just have to do what you have to do. Here are some other colors that I use quite often. These are uh, Purple Lake, a mauve, a rose matter. Here's some more of my opera, which I, you'll find over here in this palette and right here. These are just, oh, and the most terrible thing, according to a, any valid art teacher, is a no-no. You never use black, you make black but I just have this little touch of ivory black right here because sometimes I just need it. So, this is a well-used, well-loved group of colors. Here's my cheat sheet. And these are the colors that I used when I went back to Jenny in August. And one of the first lessons that we had, that we worked on, was use of warm and cool glazes. And in order to do this, we did a horse. Now, as Jenny said to us, this is not really a horse. This, don't look at it as a horse, this is not a horse. This is glazing, many, many layers. I believe there are 11 or 12 layers of color built up to produce this horse in the cool tones. And then here he is again in the warm tones. And remember, these are not horses. This is just glazing. Then we went on to working on skies. Now, I'm not a landscape person. And I had to grit my teeth. But if you don't learn from a teacher, then what is the point of being there? So, skies. Uses, using glazes. No, of course, the white is the paper. And these are the two skies that we worked on using the technique of wet on wet and glazing. And this I just laid down because in my brain, I need to see something I need to ground out a sky or I really don't visualize it properly. So I just flopped these down in order to give me a, uh, a realistic area to view the sky. From this blending, blending, blending and glazing and glazing, then we went on to doing this puppy. This fish is the, was the penultimate glazing, blending experience. And this is what I was able to come up with. Now, there again, this is really not a fish. This is an experiment. Actually, it was an experiment in terror. But it was an experiment in working with Blending colors, glazing one color over the other, making sure that you dry at the first, at the proper time. But more than anything, the wetness of this rough watercolor paper. This watercolor paper was run under a faucet until it was soaked, it almost looked like a handkerchief. And then letting it dry and hitting it at the correct moment for the paper to be ready to do this job. Learning, 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 and having great fun doing it. So, 
that's my show and tell. And now I thought I would remind you about what we did on the last Just For Me lesson. And this lesson today is also going to be Just For Me. If you will remember, uh, and if you don't, those of you who might be new, look up my playlist at the last Just For Me Autumn Leaves lesson. And our backgrounds using dark shades and tones to let the pigments work, to see how the pigments would work together as a background for these leaves. These dark pigment background colors came from this palette. Then I got so tickled by doing this, probably another word one might be obsessing, I worked on this as a background and I put more autumn leaves down and this is going to be an exercise for me because I'm going to use these leaves to make not leaves from the real world but leaf expressive I think is the new acceptable term for these leaves to learn what happens when I mix my pigments let what not so much that I mix them as what happens when the water has reached the proper stage in the paper to produce blending and mixing and glazing on each one of these leaves, including colors that we might find that I might find over here on this palette. They're not going to be a leaf one would find in the real world because I might decide that I just absolutely need to try mixing pinks and uh, fuchsia and so forth in a leaf to see what happens, to see what happens when uh, a basic new gamboge and um, a pyrrole scarlet mixed together, it's going to get some particular shade of orange. When you mix our yellow and red, you will receive, uh, produce some shade of orange. So this is going to be where we're, I'm going to work today. I'm going to pick one of these leaves and let happen what happens through the pigment and the blending. The background colors here, I think I shall come in tighter. The background colors here are, and you ladies will understand when I tell you, jewel tones. Not a watercolor word, but that's what I used. I wet, I wet a section the same way we did in the last, in the last Just For Me lesson. I wet a section and then I used my jewel tones. I might have used some Mayan. I certainly used purple. I probably used a lot of my cobalt, my undersea, my hookers, all together in one area. Then maybe I, I know that I, in some of these areas, I popped in some alizarin crimson. I might have also even used some opera. And when the, as you can see, these colors did not lighten because this is only, I did not repaint. This is the underpainting because I used a lot of pigment. I just let it sit there and dry naturally. I did not dry this. And this is where we are today. So, I hope you will enjoy watching me work. I will leave the sound on, and if I think I need to say something, I will. Otherwise, I'm going to say, let's get going. But, before I do that, I'm going to share just a moment about some new brushes that I've acquired. This is my new puppy, a Princeton Neptune, number four. I haven't used this yet, and I'm saving this one for another time. But I have discovered some wonderful brushes for laying on color and pigment. This is a Princeton Art and Brush Company 
it's a stroke one half inch stroke brush you'll notice the long length and oh my does it hold pigment this is another one Princeton select an oval mop here again long synthetic bristles but they hold a lot of pigment this is one that I have also been favoring lately do you notice that fine fine point this is a Princeton select pointed filbert number six and I think the new love of my life this is a dagger striper quarter inch notice the interesting shape of that brush and it does just exactly what one would expect it to do and you'll notice the longer length again which I, I'm starting to realize has a real effect on our watercolor painting. Today I'm going to work with my two standbys in order to get the water down on a leaf and then I'll use whatever hits takes my fancy for coloring. So here I go. What leaf shall I choose? Decisions, decisions. I think I'm going to start with this one. So, let me wet this paper so that it will be ready for me to work. Now, if I were to nick any of that background with my, the point of this brush, it might very well loosen and let flow some of the pigment into the leaf. And that will be just fine with me because it will only add a dimension to the leaf. All right, that leaf is, oops, I missed a spot. Let me get it under the light so that I can see. There we go. That's nice, but not puddly. Now I'm going to let it sit for a moment while I decide <clears throat> what colors I'm going to try here. Hmm. How about this Quinn pink as a background color? Yes, let's. Right. Let's have just a little bit of Quinn pink here. Oh my. I don't know about you, but if you really are starting to enjoy your watercolors the way I am, I just love to see this happen. I have control and yet I don't. It's just wonderful. Just wonderful. Now let's see. Oh yes, you see there's still water there and I've just added water. So it's, uh, it's moving around nicely. All righty. Now that's still kind of soppy. So, now and soppy, by the way, is definitely a, uh, an art word. Let's put some Viva on here and see if we can't take some of that up. Let's see what happens down here. Oh my, yes, look at that. It's still so wet that I can add, well, I can actually subtract a lot of that pigment that's there. But just notice it's starting to close up again because of the nature of the water that's inside the paper, not laying on top. All right, now, let 
And let's do a little of my much loved uh, Quin, Quinacrinone Gold. Now, this is going to do some interesting things to this leaf because you will know what happens when yellow and red meat. water is starting to get in. You'll notice it's losing it's losing some of its shine right here and this shine that is around the edge where I just put the Quinn Gold on is there because I, there was water in this brush and this is a thirsty brush so there was a lot of water in the bristles that fell down onto the paper. Let's see what happens if we go to adding a little purple like while we're in the areas that are still wet enough for something interesting to happen. Just going to add water here to give this a reason to move and I'm adding it right along the edge tap tap right along the edge and you'll notice yes it is the purple lake has decided to spread its wings a little bit That is the, the shine is the result of the uh, clear water that I just added. But you'll notice this shine is gone here, but it is still quite cold and quite damp. So I'm going to put just a little bit more. In fact, I'm just going to put a touch of this new gamboge on here, just because I'm, it's new to me and I want to see what happens. I'm going to put this just here at the tip. Whoa. And see what happens. Well, a lot happens. New Gamboge is strong, isn't it? Well, it's good in one place. Let's go. Just by the tip, tip, tip of the brush. Now, I'm not too tickled with this line that I'm developing, so just provide it with a little place to play. So the water is dripping down out of this brush and giving the new gamboge a place to go. All righty, I'm going to stop and I'm going to let this one dry naturally. And I think we'll go to another. Hmm. down in this area. Let's sneak in here and try this one. Wow. 
water, water everywhere. And the only real way that you can sometimes see this is to put it up under a light like I am and work it this way and look for that glow and that shine. In fact, I'm going to deliberately, I'm going to quite deliberately now step into the tip here of the outline color and see what happens. Let's loosen it up and see if we can get it to do something. Yes, there it is. Running right down. I'm just annoying that nice dry background enough and look what's happening. Isn't that fun? Well, doesn't this leaf just say it wants to be purple? So, maybe I'm going to try this new Moon Glow as my opening shot here. Let's see what happens. Oh my, this is why I'm starting to really fall in love with Daniel Smith. And certainly he's I'm not being paid in any way, shape, or form by this company. But notice what happened. Hmm, now, what will we do with that one? How about, I love the name of this, Rose of Ultramarine. Let's have a little, just a touch to see what happens. really incredible the way I could watch pigment and water do that together for long periods of time. Now I have Quinn Violet. Why not? Let's put some over here in the moon glow. Now I have to be careful because this leaf is kind of dark. And so let's see if we can make a little Viva magic here. Now it's, the leaf is also kind of wet, so I think that's going to fill up while we watch it. But yes, that did need to be lightened a bit. I'm going to go to my old standby palette here. And just put a little bit more of this up here because this leaf is underneath. I don't want to cover up all of my moon glow. very stark purple. I don't know how I'm feeling about it, but let's see what happens. We'll give it a few seconds to swim. All right, that one, those two are going to sit for a while. And let's do one more.
Let's put something up here to draw the eye. Let's try putting on a rather stayed background. We'll put a little ochre back here as our, oops, I'm not going to do anything till we put some water down. And I've just noticed that I seem to be going for all the small ones. Do you think it could be that I'm working myself up to the larger ones? Yes, I'm just kind of getting my feet wet, literally. All right, let's have a little ochre, which is a very fine background color. Inoffensive. Certainly not the pizzazz of the Quinn or the Gamboge. Alrighty. I do believe that ochre is the, yellow ochre is the Workhorse backgrounds. Now, some cadmium yellow medium. Let's go to the tip here. It's a rather opaque color. Strong little puppy. Give it a place to play. Take some of it out. Dry brush. Bring it along. Now it doesn't quite work the same way that the tissue does, but it's close. Okay. I said, quinacrinone gold is my gold is my standby. Cadmium orange, why not? This seems to be less expressive and more realistic in color, and that's good. That's a good thing. Notice the way the Quinn Gold pigment is just sitting there, and that is absolutely the way a leaf would look so I'm hoping that that stay that I can make that stay because it's certainly it certainly is fine now what particular shade of green might I want to add here on one side to remind us that they were green at one time Goodness. Get a little 
darkness under here. And we'll play up against the... I'm using a Van Dyke Brown here. Just putting the smallest drops along the edge. Because this leaf is under the large one. Still just too much of a line here to suit me, so let's give it a place to play. And that's one thing about the point on watercolor brushes. You can just put a tip of water down there and hope for the best. Alrighty, so let's go back and look at these, now that they are, oh, they're still cold, so there's still a lot of water in there, but I don't think that I'm going to do very much to those. I'm going to let them dry naturally. And I think I'm going to stop today and I will return and if you are interested in having me return and plunge into one of these large ones which I'm really now that I have my feet wet on what happens with these colors I'm really quite anxious we have one two three four five six nice big ones and I'm kind of anxious to plow in if you are interested do please leave a note in the comments and I will get back sooner to this project rather than later. I do hope that you have enjoyed this watercolor fun. If you have, please give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, share with a friend, and I would certainly appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel. Let me get one last. There we go. Bye now.